All right, here is our next example for graphing quadratic functions. We have f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 19. So as we did in the other example, here's what I want us to find. Let's find the vertex. Let's find the axis of symmetry. Let's find any x-intercepts. Let's find the y-intercept, which we know we have because of the domain, which, you know what, we already know the domain. So let's just go ahead and write that. That's negative infinity to infinity. And then we want to find the range. Okay. So the y-intercept really should be the easiest thing for us to find because this quadratic function is in the general form. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, something. And if you plug in 0, uh, that guy gives you 0, so he's gone. Minus 12 times 0, he's gone. And you have, you have 19. So we have 0, 19 for a y-intercept. Now that's going to be kind of a problem when it comes to graphing because that guy's not going to fit. So let's try to figure out everything else. Um, yeah. You know, let's start with the vertex this time. I know last time we did the x-intercepts, uh, but I want to do the vertex. So remember for the vertex, your vertex formula is negative b over 2a comma f of negative b over 2a. Now, you may be wondering, where does the negative b over 2a come from? Well, here's a little thing that you might remember, is the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula would say x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so that negative b over 2a is this guy right here, right? That's the quadratic formula, just kind of ignoring the plus or minus part. And that's where the negative b over 2a comes from. Because for the vertex, he's going to be right there in the middle of the vertex. The plus or minus pieces that you have tell you where you could potentially cross the x-axis. But negative b over 2a is the x value of x coordinate for the vertex. So let's work this out. So that means x equals negative b over 2a. So this is negative b is negative 12 over 2 times a, a is 2. All right, so this is equal to positive 12 over 4, which equals 3. Negative times negative is positive. So right now, we know that for my vertex, it's going to be 3 comma something. For my axis of symmetry, it's going to be x equals 3. We just talked about this, how the line of symmetry is a vertical line, and so it's going to take on the form x equals a number, and the x value that goes through that vertex is 3. All right, so it's 3 something. How do I figure out the other part? Oh, ding, I know. I just need to take my function and evaluate it when x equals 3, right? So that's 2 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 19. Please make sure you understand that you've got to square the 3 first. So 2 times 9 and now we multiply. So we have 18 minus 36 plus 19. And when you combine all of this, you get 1. So we plug in 3 for our function. We get out 1, so that completes 
the ordered pair for our vertex. Okay. So now let's go and address the issue of the x-intercepts. Right? For the x-intercepts, we said that's where you set the function. You take 2x squared minus 12x plus 19, and you set that equal to 0, and you solve it. All right. Well, this guy doesn't factor. We can't use the square root property as it stands right now. Completing the square is not going to be a lot of fun, but we can always do the quadratic formula, right? In fact, we wrote it at the top of the page. Let's write it again. That way, we never, ever forget it. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so as I work this out, negative b is going to become a positive 12 plus or minus the square root b squared. Let's see, b is negative 12. When you square 12, you get 144. Minus 4ac, so negative 4, times 2, times c, which is 19. All right. So let's see, let's see, do a little bit of math there. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see, I'm going to do 4 times 19 is going to give me 76 times 2. No, something's not right. Yeah. So this gives us negative 152. You know what? I'm feeling kind of unsure about myself, so don't tell anybody that I'm doing this, but let's just uh, let's just check real quick. Make sure that I'm doing this right. So negative 4 times 2 times 19. Okay, there we go. I, I, I feel good. And this is all divided by 2a, so 2 times 2 is 4. Now you see that very quickly we're going to run into a problem because this is 12 plus or minus the square root of a negative number. And since that's a negative number, that means we're going to have solutions that are imaginary. Okay. So this guy right here is going to lead to something that's imaginary. So that means for our x-intercepts, we have none. And we kind of should have figured that out kind of early on, though. You might say, how are we supposed to figure that out? If you do a quick sketch with the information that we have at hand, and we're going to do a very precise one here in just a moment, you're trying to graph a parabola whose vertex is at 3, positive 1, right there, and since this lead coefficient is 2 and it's positive, that means that we would have a parabola that is opening up like this. And from that picture, if I were to ask you, okay, what are the x-intercepts? Where does it cross the x-axis? Well, it doesn't. Because of the orientation, it's never going to cross the x-axis. All right? Now, while we are still here on this page, I want us to take our function and I want us to go through the process of completing the square. I want you guys to see what that looks like for something like this. So the first part is understanding that we're going to be looking at this, fir this first group, these first two terms, and you want to make sure that you have one for the coefficient of x squared. So there's a 2, so I want to factor out the 2 just from those first two terms. And that becomes x squared minus 6x. Leave your gaps and put the constant on the outside like that. As we go through the process of completing the square, we are expecting to get a square right here. And so let's talk about filling in those gaps, right? So we talk about what goes in here. So if we were completing the square and we had two sides of an equation to work with, 
you would do half of negative 6 to get negative 3. And negative 3 squared is plus 9. And we just talked about in the last video how adding 9 changes the problem unless I also subtract 9 like that. And it's these three pieces right here that I need to get x minus 3 quantity squared. That minus 9 is not, I don't need him. He's not part of that factorization, but I can't ignore him. So here's what happens. This 2 and the negative 9 are going to meet up. So on the outside here, it's like you're distributing. 2 times this first group, which becomes a square, and then 2 times negative 9 as he sneaks out, plus the 19 that was already here. Okay. And now we go through that process of just cleaning everything up. So 2 times x minus 3 squared, this becomes minus 18, plus 19, and so in the final cleared up version, in the vertex form, we have 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 1. And you can see how this is going to match up with things. That means that you're going to move, move to the right 3 units, and this means that you're going to go up one unit, which is what we have here, right three and up one. The two, remember that coefficient of two just means you're going to be taking your parabola and you're going to be stretching it out. So let's see what that looks like when we go to our graph. All right. All right, so we have f of x equals two x squared, what was that? Uh, minus 12x plus 19. We said that our vertex was over here at 3, 1. So we mark that point. And as we've done in the past, we also mark out our new set of x and y axes. And of course, that new y axis is actually our um, axis of symmetry. Now your key points this is what you have to understand. So this is our 0, 1, and 2. Because we have the 2 here, it's going to be taking that parabola and stretching it out like that. So those normal key points we would have had for the parabola are now being multiplied times 2. So 1 squared should have been 1, but times 2 is going to be up here. And then 2 squared should have been up 4 units, but since we've got the 2 here, we're going to double that distance, so instead of being 4, it's going to be up 8. And because we have that line of symmetry, we can copy these points over here. So that's up 2, and that's up 8. And so here is our parabola with a slight stretch because of the factor of 2. So you can see that he does not cross the x-axis. So when we said there were no x-intercepts, you, you can see that here. Uh, one of the other things we didn't fill out yet was the range. So what is the range here? If we look at our picture, okay, you see that we are increasing. The lowest we get is positive 1. So we are going from positive 1 up to infinity. So that's our range. So the things to, to point out about this guy is that when we try to solve this to find the x-intercepts, we would end up with something that was imaginary. And so that meant that we had no x-intercepts. We always have a y-intercept because the domain is all real numbers, which must include x equals 0. And we got the 19 simply, simply by plugging in 0 here, which becomes 0. That becomes 0. And we've got 19 at the end. Okay? And all together, it gives us that wonderful picture, and everything coordinates with one another.